Tom Lee recently predicted a 4% SP500 gain in June, and it appears to be true. Two major announcements have occurred in the past two weeks. These are NFP and PCE, or personal consumption expenditures. This week, the Fed and CPI will meet on the same day. This event matters. We'll consider global market scenarios and strategize. The SP500 gained over half its value this year. Remember that the NVIDIA divide is crucial. Ryan Dietrich took the X shot. This research, this is from Bank of America, and it really highlights why you want to have some small cap exposure in your portfolio, if not be actually heavily weighted to small caps over the next couple of years, because as Ryan Dietrich says, a lot of the earnings are expected to come from small caps over the next two years. And you can see this here represented in the SP600 versus the SP500 based on consensus estimates. And what you've seen is small caps have had declining earnings since uh, Q4 2022, uh, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q3, Q4, and Q1 of uh, 2024. So basically the last two years small cap earnings have not been good now what you're going to see is some large year over year growth okay. And this is on consensus estimates, right? So think about it like this consensus estimates are real low for small cap. The, the pessimism is out there for small cap. So odds are these estimates are too low as is think that would be kind of crazy, huh? Now, large cap, as you can see represented here in light blue, they're expected to still grow earnings quite, quite well, but not as well as small caps. And in large cap names, estimates are at the highest. They have been in a long time time. So it's going to be even harder to meet this bar. And it could be easier for small caps to meet this bar. Remember what Tom Lee said about small caps back in March and what he reiterated last night. We talked about the Russell 2000 big day today. And small caps appear to be Allen on small caps. Our view is that small caps are on a relative value basis back to where they were in 99, a launch point for a 12E outperformance period. I think the Russell can rise 50% this year, bringing the Russell 2000 to 3000. I wish to clarify. Some crowd members realized 1,550 meant 50%, but not 5%. I want to spread this information this year. Tom, you're right. Because Russell firms that make money trade at 11 times cash flow. Many Russell 2000 equities are selling near cash, and book value is high. Bigger firms may buy lesser names for several reasons. As expected, the Russell 2000 features several biotech stocks and is rising again. Neighborhood banks thrive when the Fed cuts rates. I think the Russell 2000 is the clearest example of what happens when the Federal Reserve lowers interest rates because of its financial weight. The Russell may be affected this week because the Federal Reserve and CPI both release on the same day. The non-farm payroll data was good. Wall Street sold stocks because they expected increased inflation. Not always. Jerome Powell said that 2023 saw solid job numbers and falling inflation. As long as inflation lowers, the economy may grow stronger. It's the best possible outcome. Friday, what happened? While not spectacular, the jobs data was better than projected and worth noting. There were also terrible things, including 625,000 full-time jobs lost last month and 286,000 part-time employment created. Losing full-time work is never pleasant, but if inflation does well on June 12th, the same day the Fed does this week, it would be the ultimate soft landing situation. After two months of declining inflation, the Fed should feel more confident about reducing rates sooner. When other major central banks dropped rates, the U.S. did too. The ECB slashed rates first, then Canada. Wall Street expects the first Fed decrease on November 7th, with 47.4% likelihood of happening and 35.6% chance of doing nothing, the Fed calls it a nothing burger. Wall Street expects the Fed to act now. As of November 7th, you can watch it. I think July 31st is more important than September 18th. If the Federal Reserve talks about reducing rates in July, some think stocks will rise. Doing this feels right to me. This remark is even more accurate given the recent, intriguing job data. A lower consumer price index CPI would make me think the Fed will behave worse. Because the CPI number on Fed meeting day will generate a lot of movement. If the Fed cut rates on July 31st, the money markets would probably be stunned. This is my research-based opinion. Undoubtedly, NVIDIA will be important in the story. NVIDIA will start trading after the split coming Monday morning around $120 per share or so. Now what tends to happen after stock splits is you do tend to get a sell-off because a lot of people trade the stock split right and then after the stock splits they're like, hey, maybe the stock's going to go down for a while. So we're going to get out now considering NVIDIA has had a what $550 rally just since April. Maybe you could get some kind of sharp selling. Don't be surprised if that happens and that could have a negative impact obviously on the broader markets, and you can actually see even now for, specifically small cap. 
and the Russell 2000 EPS growth has now turned positive on a year-over-year -year basis in the since the first time since September of 2022, you can also see that small caps are trading at a huge discount relative to large caps, and normally throughout the last you know 2030 years small caps have always traded at a higher PE than large cap names that would suggest suggest that maybe small caps on a PE basis could go up, you know, 1.52x, right? Those are some large gains. And that's one of the reasons why Tom Lee believes you could see such a large rally in small caps. Why do tiny caps have higher price to earnings ratios? I think everyone should consider that small cap stocks grow faster but are riskier. High return businesses build value over time, whereas well-known names retain worth after their debut. Pantheon believes the new job data prevents the Fed from lowering rates in July. However, they keep predicting worse news that might lower rates in September. This is another benefit of news. Their statement predicted 125 basis points in interest rate reductions this year. They estimate this amount. At September and November and December meetings, rates will drop 25 basis points and 50 basis points, respectively. Go elsewhere. Leave town. Think there won't be a cut in July but 50 basis points in November and December. Oh my gosh, you would have to see some big weakening in, in the economy to get the Fed to act at that kind of a pace or inflation coming down at a dramatic pace. And that's why I'm quite optimistic for this week with CPI and the Fed is because Wall Street has taken basically off the table the chance of a cut coming July. But the jobs reports did nothing in the grand scope of things to delay the Fed cutting rates in July. If inflation comes down, that's it. That's all that matters. Wall is so caught up in the jobs numbers. And what that'll do for Fed policy when in all reality Powell has made it very clear the jobs numbers will do nothing to change what the Fed is going to do. It all comes down to inflation. Inflation will come out Wednesday at 8. 30 in the morning Eastern Standard Time. You're expecting a core month over month rate of 0.3%. Last month you were at 0.3% as well. But I talk about this all the time when it comes down to data points like this. It doesn't come out as a whole number. It comes out as, as like 0 0.3, 0, 0 0 0.3, 0.3, 1.3, 1.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3
I'll discuss these topics in the upcoming film. I hope you have a fantastic day and weekend and hope to meet someday.